Now let's study what is consumer's equilibrium. Till now we have studied what is indifference curve. We have also done what is budget line or the price line. The consumer's equilibrium is that concept which mixes these two concepts. That is the indifference curve and the budget line. It brings these two things on the same graph. We have indifference curves that is IC1, IC2, IC3, IC4 and IC5 on the same graph as well as this budget line which is running across these indifference curves. But let's first understand what is consumer's equilibrium. Consumer's equilibrium is that combination of goods where the consumer is deriving maximum level of satisfaction. The consumer is at that point where the combination of the goods is such that he is deriving the highest level of satisfaction. And since consumer is at that point where he is deriving the highest level of satisfaction, he will not be able to change his consumption pattern. He will not be able to rearrange his consumption levels because it is only the single point. Let's see how. Now in this graph, we can see that there are five indifference curves where IC1 is the lowest indifference curve and IC5 is the highest indifference curve. So it goes without saying that IC2 will give a higher level of satisfaction than IC1. IC3 will give a higher level of satisfaction than IC2. Similarly, IC4 will give a higher amount of satisfaction than IC3. And finally, IC5 will give you a higher satisfaction than IC4. So in this case, where do you think the consumer will have the highest level of satisfaction? It obviously will be on the IC5 because it is the highest indifference curve. So it will give you the highest level of satisfaction. But can the consumer go on increasing his consumption? Can he consume to that level which goes beyond his capacity? No. And this capacity is defined by the price line or the budget line which is shown in the green ink here. This is the budget line or the price line. That means the consumer cannot go beyond this price line. He cannot go above or beyond this price line. He has to stick to the limit of the budget line or be inside the budget line. But we've learned that it is in the consumer's benefit that he is, it is in the benefit of the consumer that it is in the benefit of the consumer when he is on the budget line rather than being inside the budget line. So on the budget line we have points R, S, Q, T and H. All these points lie on the budget line. So the consumer will try to choose one of these points which give him the maximum satisfaction. Now let's take these points one by one. Point R lies on the budget line. It also lies on IC1. Similarly, point H lies on the budget line and it also lies on the indifference curve 1. These both points will give the same level of satisfaction. 
but if we take a close look we can see that there is point s which is also on the budget line but it lies on the higher indifference curve it is on ic2 so it is sure to give me a higher satisfaction than point r and point h again there is point t which is similar to point s it is also on the budget line and on the ic2 so s and t will give me the same level of satisfaction but on further analysis you can see that there is point q which is on the budget line as well as it is on a higher indifference curve on ic3 so q will give the consumer the higher satisfaction q will give the consumer a higher satisfaction than r then h then s and t again it is impossible to go beyond ic3 the consumer cannot go beyond ic3 because this is where his budget line restricts him so we can say that the point q here is consumer's equilibrium why is it so because at point q the consumer derives the highest level of satisfaction being within his budget at point r at point s at point t and point h he is within his budget yet he does not get that much level of satisfaction that as much he gets on point q because q is on a higher indifference curve and he cannot go beyond the point q because his budget does not allow it. because his budget does not allow that so we can say that at point q the consumer is at his equilibrium he should consume m units of good x and n units of good y this is the best combination to maximize his satisfaction level now another thing to be noted here is the budget line cuts the ic1 at r and again at h it is cutting it it is intersecting it so there have to be two points those two points are r and h likewise it is cutting ic2 at s and t but at point q it is tangent to ic3 it is not cutting ic3 it is only tangent to it it is only touching it so we can say at point q the budget line will always be tangent to the indifference curve at the point where the consumer has reached its equilibrium the budget line will always be tangent to the indifference curve there it will not cut it will not intersect but be only touching it but be only a tangent to it again we can say that at point q the slope of indifference curve equals to the slope of budget line at q slope of ic equals to slope of budget line both meet at the same point that is the point q 
so their slope has to be same at that point and finally the marginal rate of substitution at point q that is where the consumer has reached his equilibrium will be equal to marginal utility of x divided by marginal utility of y equals to price of x upon price of y this is nothing but the application of equi marginal utility analysis or the application of the law of equi marginal utility the law of equi marginal utility says that mu of x divided by p of x should be equal to mu of y divided by p of y so you've only interchanged the p of x and mu of y so this is the application of the law of equi marginal utility which tells you that the satisfaction level where the mu of a commodity divided by the price of that commodity equals to the mu of other commodity divided by the price of other commodity is highest the satisfaction level there will be the highest and same is the case when we reach the consumers equilibrium so this was about consumers equilibrium in the topic consumer behavior